Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to share with you my review of the Thermal Master P2 infrared camera. So let me start off by saying this camera is a very close cousin, maybe even not quite a twin, but maybe even a very close brother of this other infrared camera that I reviewed a while ago, about a year ago. It's the Infrared P2 infrared camera. Now, look at these two. Look at these two. They look so similar. They're almost the exact same size. Well, here, let me take this cover off here. They're almost the exact same size. What, what's the difference? I mean, this one, the infrared, which I reviewed last year, was dubbed the world's smallest infrared camera. This one by Thermal Master, they are calling the world's second smallest infrared camera. So clearly these two know each other, and I'll get back to this later, but they work off the exact same software platform too. So I, I don't know what the relationship is, but they're related. As far as the difference in size, you could see it's negligible. And then for the difference in weight, it's the difference of one gram. This thing, what I'm reviewing today, weighs 10 grams. The other one weighed nine grams. Okay, that's about as much comparison as I'm going to do. Let's get into the basics. So for starters, this is the camera itself. It has a USB-C port, plugs into the charging port on your phone. Where'd my phone go? like almost every infrared camera for a mobile device that I have tested, the USB-C port does not fit into my phone with my phone case on. It will fall off. Well, I can't get it to fall off, but it's not gonna work. So to use it, I need to pop my phone out of the case. And now, actually, you know what? I'm gonna face my phone towards you so you can see how fast the software launches. I think it's pretty slick. Um, we'll pop that in, and it just did something. Let me unlock my phone. And here goes the software. Boom, we're going. Um, it, it just automatically launches the software, and I'll come back to the software in a hot minute. But it, it, uh, it's a USB-C port. It's only available for Android devices at the time that I'm doing this review. This is mid-October of 2024. They tell me that they're gonna have a camera that's available for iPhones too. I suspect it's probably gonna be a USB-C port, but I don't know, it's just speculation. So that's the form factor. It also comes with a USB male to female cable. So if you do want to have your phone in the phone case, and you don't want to take it out of the case, you could plug this cable in here, and then you could plug the other end, you could plug the camera into the other end of the cable, and then you're good to go. The one thing I can tell you, I have used the other camera in this configuration before, and as you go around and you're, you're scanning different rooms and scanning different areas, it's really weird to turn this and have it displayed differently on your phone, you get so used to holding a phone and having what you see on the screen correspond to the direction that you point your phone, it is very weird to have them not do the exact same thing. So what I did was get a little piece of Velcro and I put it on the back of my phone so I could stick it on here. Now, you can go into the software and you can change the orientation so you don't have the cable coming up. You could actually have the cable coming from the other direction. But then when you go back and you do stick it directly into your phone, you gotta go back in and change it again. So I just left it this way. So now I've got it stuck on my phone and as I turn it one way or the other, it, uh, it, it follows, it tracks. And as I'm turning it back and forth, something I would like you to appreciate is the fact that it tracks very quickly. With, the, with most other handheld infrared cameras that we've been using in the past, like the ones made by FLIR, they have a refresh rate of nine, what is it, megahertz? I can't remember what the term is. Uh, they have a, a refresh rate of nine. Uh, that's apparently a US limitation. This one has a refresh rate of 20, it's Hertz. It's Hertz, not megahertz. 
it's, it's Hertz. Uh, this one has a refresh rate of 25 Hertz. So as we turn around, we go side to side, it's very smooth. It's, it's like in real time. There, there is no big lag between where you turn your phone and what you see on the screen. I really like that feature. Next thing to talk about is the resolution. Now th this was a weird one for me. On their website, they say the resolution is 256 by 192 or 192 by 256, however you want to say it. Um, it, it seems as though the native resolution that, or the, the native form that this wants to have is for you to hold it sideways so you get the portrait orientation. Who cares? Uh, this is what they say the resolution is, 256. However, on their Amazon store listing, they say the resolution is 512 by 384, twice the resolution that they have on their website. Why the difference? Why does the website not have this? I sent them an email, I asked them about it, and they said they've got some software that upgrades it. I don't know what that means. So is the resolution actually better? And if it is, why don't they state the higher resolution on their official website? I don't know. So let's take a look at a head-to-head -head comparison. I use this guy and I used the Infrared P2, you know, it's, it's close twin, uh, close brother. And I took the exact same image and then I zoomed in on the two images a little bit to see if it actually is better. And I, I'd say there is better resolution. You can see on the image on the left, it is a more crisp image. It's not strikingly different, but it is noticeable. So we'll, we'll, we'll say maybe it's 512 by 384. Not quite sure. And then another important thing to note is the thermal sensitivity. It, it has a rating of less than 40 MK or millikelvins. Thank you to somebody who commented on my last video, which is great. That's a fantastic number. You compare it to something like the, uh, one of the FLIR cameras that attaches to your phone and their rating is less than 150. Thermal sensitivity is very important when you want to detect thermal anomalies, which is kind of the whole reason you're using an infrared camera. It's to figure out subtle differences in temperatures that might indicate a problem. So very good thermal sensitivity, very good resolution. I'll show you some comparison images in just a minute here, but I also want to talk about the software because that was kind of one of my biggest beefs when I was using the infrared about a year ago. I complained about it being tough to get going. It was buggy. It would crash all the time. Now, I don't know if it's a difference in camera. Maybe they upgraded the software. Maybe it's the fact that I'm not using the same phone. When I did the first review, I was using a Google Pixel 8 phone. Now I'm using a Google Pixel 9 Pro. So we've got three different variables here that have changed. Don't know which one affected it. However, I can tell you, I have not had a single issue with the software. From the first time I plugged it in uh, to the time I'm doing this review, had not, have not had it crash, haven't had anything buggy happen. It has been super responsive and whatever issues they had, um, they're not happening anymore. I've been very happy with the performance of the software. And I'll, I'll demonstrate this again. I'm gonna pop this in, and it was, it was waiting for me. I, I pop it in, it takes just a second to load, and now we're ready to shoot. So, very responsive software. It has worked error-free for me, and it's got all the same stuff that I talked about last time. It's got, it's got different color palettes that I can choose from. It has different scales that I can choose. I can, I can change the orientation. A bunch of stuff that you would want. You can, you can select point temperatures. The couple, couple little things that I don't like about it. Oh, and by the way, in the, in the bottom corner, it's got this logo which you can remove. It says infrared, just like the old camera. Why does it say infrared? I don't know, but at any rate, um, 
the, the one thing that I, I, I really am bothered by with this is the fact that the temperature scale, which I always like to have on the side for all my infrared images, it doesn't show up. You need to manually turn it on. You need to hit the scale button. And now, oh, all right, let me put it there. There. Now the scale shows up. And as soon as I exit out of the application and I come back in, the scale is gone again. Why? This is dumb. This could be fixed with a software update, I'm sure. Why do I need to turn the scale back on every time? But that's the way it's set up. And then the other thing, and I talked about this on the last one, last review I did, is that when I turn it sideways, the scale does not change orientation. But when I do point temperatures, it does change the orientation of those. So it knows that I turned my phone sideways, but it doesn't change what's shown on the screen. And so if I'm using this from home, for home inspections and I'm taking all of my images in landscape format, it means that I've got writing on my photos that's not the correct orientation. It bothers me. And by the way, it's, it's giving me this message right now because I unplugged it again. And then one other thing with the software that uh, people online have complained about, the software did not get good ratings. I mean, it's... It's got a rating on the Google Play Store somewhere around two point something. I don't know, whatever it is, it's not great. And one of the biggest complaints people said is that it does not capture video. There's a problem with the video. All the videos turned out garbled and they don't work. Um, I have not had any issues with the video. So let me just uh, set this up and we'll record myself in video. Okay, now I'm looking at my infrared camera. The video has worked perfectly for me. I've tried taking a bunch of videos. Every time I do it, it just works. There's no issues with it. So I don't know why other people were having problems. Mine has been perfectly flawless. Back to the camera. Let's look at some image comparisons. I like to compare the images to those taken with the FLIR E6. This has been our workhorse here at Structure Tech for, gosh, the last decade? So, you know, it's kind of an old camera at this point now. It's got a resolution of 160 by 120, but it's good. It's a good camera. So let's, let's look at some side-by-sides here. As you can see, we have superior image quality with the Thermal Master P2. It, there's no comparison. It, it is way better. So if you're using this camera for occasional use, if you're gonna use it to be a backup as a home inspector, if you're a weekend warrior and you occasionally want to find stuff in your own house, if you're in some type of trade where you might only use it once a week, once a month, this is a fantastic option. The camera retails for $249 on Amazon. At the time that I'm doing this review, they've got an instant automatic $50 coupon bringing the price down to $199. And then on top of that, I've got a discount code that you can enter at the Amazon checkout page. It's called Master P2. And it'll get you another 20 bucks off or so, bringing down the price to $179 and some change. You can't beat that price. I, I'm gonna call this the best value of any infrared camera on the market today. Now, I, as a home inspector, I'm not gonna go plugging this thing into my phone and using it that way, but it would make for a great backup, like I said, and, and it would make for a great Christmas gift. If you have anybody in your life who would like an infrared camera, it's hitting the market right at the right time. How long are these discounts gonna be around for? I have no idea. They didn't tell me. So, I love this camera. I think it's a great buy. And unlike the last video I did, I do not get a piece of the pie if you buy this camera. <laughs> this is a 100% unbiased review. Okay, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.